With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hello and welcome. It is Eric Erickson here, the Eric Erickson Show. The phone number, should you wish to be a part of this year program, 877-973-7425. Glad to have you with me today. Barry Loudermilk is going to join me at the bottom of this hour. Barry Loudermilk, congressman from Georgia, who is being wrongly accused by the January 6th committee of having uh, helped the people who came into the the capital. You know what's so interesting here is they've been trying for over a year to try to find someone that they could blame, and they tried Lord Bobert, they tried Marjorie Taylor Greene, they tried a number of others, and of all the people, they said it on Barry Loudermilk because he gave a constituent tour uh, to some some of his constituents the day before, none of whom, by the way, were actually um, tied to. What happened? The whole thing is just nonsense. I'm in furious on his behalf. He's such a nice guy. Uh, and I, I reached out and said, do you want to be on the show? And he said, yes. So he'll join me here at the bottom of the hour. Right now, I'm t- going to take a special phone call. I normally wouldn't take a phone call right now, but Madison is calling. Madison, welcome to the program. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm great. Now, how old are you? I'm 10 years old. My gosh, and you're listening to me on the radio. That's, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm listening to it because my uh, dad does. Oh, okay. Well, good dad then. So what's going on? Um, Nothing much. So my dad was listening to um your show earlier, and you were talking about Father's Day. So he thinks that Father's Day should be every day. So what do you thought? I think so, too. Uh, I think every day should be Father's Day. And I think every day that, that our children and our wives should get up and make us breakfast in bed. <laughs> <laughs> We, we would get it. We would get in, 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 in great big trouble, Madison. So, Madison, do you like hanging out with your dad? Yes. What do you like to do the most? Um... Hmm. Play golf in the backyard. Uh, we like to play golf in the backyard. Oh, that's nice. Do, do you know I played golf with my uh, 12-year-old back at Christmas, and he hit me in the head with the golf club. <laughs> I had to go to the hospital. I don't remember anything after that happened. Um, he got a great hit. Um, he's also he's, he's a much better golfer now, too. <laughs> we we went to the actual golf course and now now get good uh, and, and don't give your dad a concussion like like Gunner gave me a concussion but I appreciate you calling in. You're welcome. Now are you do you have something nice for your dad for Father's Day that you don't need to tell him about but you you got him something? Yes, I actually made him something. Nice, good. That's the way you do it. It is the homemade gifts. They will remember those the most. All right, you guys have a great weekend. You too. Thanks for listening, Madison. That's great. Now, I, I should say, actually, Gunnar had just turned 13, in fairness. Uh, how is it fair? He's all He turned 13 and hit me in the head with a golf club. <laughs> you know, can I just I, – I was, was, thank you, Madison, for calling. As an aside, I still don't remember that week. I, I don't remember it. Um, I should not admit this to you guys, but I think I have before that. Uh, so Drew Anderson, who actually just left us here at my flagship station a while back, uh, commented the next week on how well I had done on radio that week. He had been a little bit worried about having me on radio. I do not remember doing radio the week after that happened. I, I have no recollection. As far as I'm convinced, I had a third week off the radio. And I can go back and listen to myself. I can listen. And I did a very good job on radio that week. I did. I, I'm Because I don't remember any of it. I don't remember any. It's the weirdest thing, y'all, to have a, like, so I was talking to a, a guy, the, the neurologist they made me go see. 
And he was saying it, it it's just uh, the impacts on your head do different things. Like most athletes, because of the impact on their head at the time, uh, they don't remember the injury. But if you get hit on the side of your head where I got hit, it's your kind of memory is kind of foggy for the way you remember the injury, which I remember. I can still to this day hear the sound of it. Um, and But I can't really remember a lot the rest of the week. I was out playing golf a while back and had a guy come up to me and was talking to me. And, and he kind of looked at me and says, you don't remember who I am, do you? I said, no. He said, I'm the guy who sewed up your head. <laughs> yep. I have no memory of you sewing up. I mean, I can feel like to this day, I can feel the, the indentation, but I don't really remember it. It's kind of weird. I will tell you this, though. Getting hit on the side of your head with a golf club and getting stitches in your head does not hurt nearly as bad as chopping off your thumb. That that actually getting and I, I'm only like three eighths of an inch off of my thumb, but it it looks gross, um, and it hurts way more. I'm sure y'all wanted to know. We should move on before I get to Congressman Loudermilk here at the bottom of the hour because I got other stuff I want to talk about right now. Y'all, can I ask a question? When did drag queens become a thing? in common culture. We were talking about this on, so I call, I have a team call every morning with all the stuff I want to talk about on the show. I said, I want to talk about this issue. Charles Cook at National Review has a piece about it as well. That look, I mean, drag queens in gay culture have been a thing for a very long time. But a couple of years ago, during the Trump administration, it came out that there were some libraries around the country in progressive areas of the country where you were doing drag queen story hours to normalize gay culture to young kids, uh, and they were letting drag queens do story hour. And, of course, it became a thing among conservatives that, that this just doesn't seem like it's, it's a wise thing. And the only thing I can figure is that that reaction by conservatives – has caused liberals, uh, much like a lot of, you, you know, on the right, it's, it's owning the libs. Everything they do, they want to own the libs. It's not really principle. They just want to make liberals mad. That's the only thing I can think of here is that now it's it's liberals doing the same thing. It's, it's to, to own the cons, own the conservatives. We're, gonna, we're all going to have drag queens come to all of our events because we want to own the right. We, we know they're mad. at. I, I don't know that this is a healthy, good thing. A video came out last night on the Libs of TikTok account, and it was of a drag queen, of a man dressed up as a woman, and he was wearing um, a, a fake silicon getup to make it look like he had exposed breasts, and they were like slinkies bouncing up and down and doing very explicit gyrations in the restaurant. And it was a group of people with their kids like and I'm not talking like teenagers. I'm talking elementary school kids. How is this? Now, listen, let let me put it to you this way. Ask yourself if it was a real female stripper. Would it be appropriate if it was a real female stripper? If not... How is it appropriate for it to be a drag queen with with fake breasts? I don't understand how anyone thinks any of this is is good for society or healthy. It's it's a a symbol of societal decline. It's one one of the markers of the the collapse of of Rome and even the, the, the Greeks before them was a sexual obsession in society. That's not healthy. And I, I think we're there. At this point, I think we're there. Um, it, it's 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 just not healthy, and I realize it's Pride Month. I noticed last night. Uh, so uh, Star Trek has a new TV series out, uh, Strange New Worlds. I kind of like it. I've enjoyed it. It's episodic. You don't have to pay attention episode to episode. Um, it's it very much like the original Star Trek in that regard. I, I like it. Uh, it's got a good cast. Uh, I've, I've enjoyed the storytelling. And it's just it's a good distraction. It's not like deep cerebral TV. It's just a good distraction. And on my Apple TV, Paramount made me update the Paramount app to be able to watch. You got to have Paramount Plus. 
So I updated. Do you know what the entire update was? The entire update was an update solely to change the Paramount logo to a rainbow flag. That's it. The The entire update was to update the, the Paramount app logo to the pride flag. The, well, the pride flag and the tra- trans flag combine all the colors of the flag, the baby tones, the pastels, and the bright colors, which is such a weird thing to see. It's not a very attractive flag. I mean, at least the rainbow flag was a was a nice flag to look at. Now you got all the other weird uh, colors in there, and it's it's kind of a, a an ugly mess. They need some somebody to sit down and and do some real art there. But nonetheless, along the way, it's it's drag queens everywhere, and and I, I, the more and more these stories come out, the more and more appalling they are. And uh, one, um, well, I think it was in Wisconsin. The drag queen exposed his genitals to the kids during the parade. Nobody's doing anything about it because it was just it was a drag queen. Parade. They're exposing their genitals. This is not healthy. This is not a sign of a healthy society. And again, what I really do think it is, there are a couple of things at play here. One is it's in the same way that people on the right have done things just to infuriate people on the left. That's what's happening here. Is it's a tit for tat in in making the other side mad. But also, but also. In the same way we have seen in the past, abortion is almost a sacrament of progressive secularism. You've got to either support it, give money towards it, or have one. Increasingly, this uh, exposition, hedonist exposition of drag queens, is becoming part of culture for secular religion. It is becoming part of the liturgical aspect of it. There are things you have to do as a progressive secularist to prove you are a progressive secularist. You've got to attend a drag queen show. You've got to give money to Planned Parenthood. You've got to protest a Republican, a conservative, or, or at an environmental uh, movement thing. you you got to protest, and you got to do these sorts of things. It is becoming, as this new religion crops up on us, it is becoming rites of passage within the religion. We're seeing this in real time. Just as we're seeing a political realignment in this country in real time, we're watching this new religion develop. I'm actually, uh, I've got to be gone in about a month for a couple of days. I'm doing a panel with Judge Ken Starr from, uh, the, from Whitewater, and a couple of other people. It's a um, conference of legal scholars, and I am not the legal scholar, but I actually uh, I, I I do know my con law. And they've asked me to be on the panel. And one of the things we're discussing is how, in the past, the Supreme Court has treated secularism as a neutral position that we can't uh, pick between religions, so we'll pick secularism. But as secularism takes on the tenets of a religion in and of itself. It's probably time for the Supreme Court to revisit their neutrality rules under their their uh, case law because essentially it has become a religion. It has dogmas. It has orthodoxies. It has liturgies. It has an ecclesiology. It's taking on the tenor, shape, and form of a religion, and part of it is the celebration of drag queens, not just during Pride Month but all year long and exposing secular kids to it to raise them in that way and this is just not a healthy thing to do for kids. It's like letting your your five year old uh, take hormone blockers, puberty blockers. It's it's not a wise choice for society, but it's being done in response to people on the right who are upset about it as a way to further provoke them. You're using your children as a way to provoke other people, and that's not just a sign of of like spiritual unhealth. It's a sign of deep immaturity. There are a lot of options out there. If you're a self-starter and you want to invest on your own, it can be really confusing. And I'm delighted to tell you about SoFi because that's who I use. And now I've got them as an advertiser. If you're a SoFi user, uh, my gosh, you get all sorts of options, great research. You get the ability to invest in stocks, EFTs, crypto, plan out your retirement. Uh, More importantly, you got people you can call on. I mean, for example, um, I can use SoFi to buy stocks and EFTs and do the deep dive research if I need to and get complimentary financial planners ready to help answer questions. Uh, You can too, whether you're stuck on where to start or need help deciding what to do next. You can even save for retirement with traditional Roth and SEP IRAs. They have so many options. If you're into crypto, 
You can also explore crypto. They've got 30 available coins, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, Solana, Dogecoin, and so much more. But more importantly, they've got the number one ranked automated investment tool, their robo-advisor. It takes the stress out of building and managing a diversified portfolio without having to pay a bunch of experts to do it. I really like SoFi. Y'all, I've tried, you name it, and I probably tried it. And I settled on SoFi and think you will like it as well. Cut through the jargon, make investing easier with SoFi. Visit SoFi.com slash Eric to learn how you can win up to $1,000 in stock when you open an account. That's SOFI.com slash Eric. Brokerage and active investing products offered through SoFi Securities, LLC. Member Fin. Recipic. Uh, you know, I'm wondering if the pendulum is starting to swing back a little bit. Um, the overplayed hands. We, we, the stories at CNN, Chris Lick, the new guy at CNN, is telling employees stop using the phrase the big lie. It's a Democratic talking point. Uh, tone down. Um, I, I, it's, it's, I'm, I'm encouraged by the direction that he's taking. And I know I won't be happy with all of it, but now the athletic, I I've been a subscriber to the athletic for a number of years. Uh, I, you know, I kind of, I kind of knew a few years ago. I just, I need to finally, like I'm, I'm a 40 year old man. I need to figure out sports because my kids are going to have questions and started watching college football. And, and then the NFL already was into baseball, but so I, I got a subscription to the athletic. Really? I got a subscription to the athletic because I wanted to keep up with the Braves and the Cubs. Now, if you're not familiar with The Athletic, The Athletic is a uh, sports site. And essentially what makes it so interesting and unique is you can pick your favorite teams. And you can get uh, daily emails, and it covers specifically the news of the teams you're interested in. And you can go get all the other stuff. But the email that comes to you, like the email that comes to me every day from The Athletic, covers all the latest news about the Braves and the Cubs, the two baseball teams I care about, uh, the Saints, the Falcons, because I'm, I'm, I'm not a big Falcons guy, even though I live in Georgia. I'm, I grew up with the Saints, but uh, brings in the Saints. Uh, and now I've got it updated as well, um, but um, with a couple of other football teams. But it, it brings all this information in. And yes, Philip, hockey as well. And so I can read it like a newspaper every day. It's like a sports page just for me. It's brilliant. And I can jump through the articles and I can find more information if I want to. The New York Times bought it at the beginning of the year. They'd been trying to sell themselves for a very high valuation. Didn't work out. The New York Times ultimately bought them, uh, bringing some real sports stuff to them. But here's the catch. Paul Fichtenbaum, the publication's chief content officer, announced a new rule. Stop being political. Let me just read you uh, what, what, what the chief content officer said. We don't want to stop people from having a voice and raising their voice for appropriate issues. But there comes a point where something that is straightforward, hey, I'm concerned about guns in America, for instance, right? That's an apolitical statement. It becomes political when you say I'm concerned about guns in America and this political party is the reason we're having the issue. That's when it tips over the line. So, again, we don't want to stop people from having a voice and expressing themselves. We need to keep it from tipping over into a political space. And, of course, some staffer leaked it and is complaining, how dare he stifle my freedom of expression? I got to tell you, um, one of the worst things to happen in the world today are Gen Zers. Uh, and and the the younger millennials uh, the the idea that they are so entitled to bring their whole self to the office no you're not it's not yours you don't get to bring your whole self to the office nobody wants your whole self you're egotistical you're self centered you're a little lazy nobody wants that at the office leave that stuff at home on the couch in your mama's basement you go to work with a work ethic to produce work for an employer and you get a paycheck that's it. If you don't like it, you go get a different job. If you complain about it, you don't have to work there. It's it's an employee economy right now till the recession hits. And then when they find out how bad you suck, they're not going to hire you anywhere. I mean, what is with the work ethic of kids today who think they're entitled to bring their entire self to the office and emote through the day and, and be offended by their colleagues? The amount of young people today, oh my gosh, I sound like my dad, get off my lawn. 
But seriously, have you read the studies and the stories? It's like one of the chief complaints in like the, the liberal nonprofit space now that I read that article the other day is, will I hire an employee who blows me up from the inside, who sabotages my operation? And inevitably, it's a 20-something out of college who feels very entitled and they decide they're going to control the entire company as if they're the CEO. It doesn't work that way. It, we've had such an easy time in this country in the last 20, 30 years economically, uh, without war or anything like that, outside of like uh, going to Iraq and Afghanistan. It has an impact on a lot of people. Uh, hard times are coming, and some of these kids are not going to make it. They're just not going to be able to survive when the hard times come because they've become so entitled in a world where they could be pampered and privileged because everything was so easy. It's not going to be easy anymore, and they're not going to know what to do. Uh, you go to work for a company, uh, you're their employee. You're not the boss when you're the employee. You don't get to have it your way. It's not Burger King. Grow up. Hi there. It is Eric Erickson here nationwide. The phone number is 877-973-7425 if you want to be on the program, except you can't because I got a guest, congressman from Georgia. You may have heard of in the news the January 6th committee, they, they well, they needed somebody to try to blame, and they found, like, one of the nicest guys in Congress to try to attack, and it's not going to work. Uh, Congressman Barry Loudermilk is joining me. How are you? Eric, it's good to hear you, my friend. I'm, I'm doing well. So, I, I'm, I, I, first of all, I, I, let me back up. So, I started hearing months ago that uh, the rumor that clearly – some members of Congress gave tours to quote unquote insurrectionists. And the first they said it was Lauren Boebert and it didn't check out. Then they said it was Marjorie Taylor Greene and they didn't check out. Then they named a couple of others and they finally got to, to Barry Loudermilk. And I was like, hey, you got to be kidding me. And even the Capitol Police say it's not true. And yet you never know that reading the New York Times. Exactly. And and I think the reason that they they tried to they landed on me is because when that first allegation was made back in January, I think it was January the 16th of last year, shortly after the attacks on the Capitol, which, by the way, were horrible. It never should have happened. Bad people did bad things, clearly. I'm on the committee of House Administration, which is has oversight of security of the Capitol. So as soon as Mickey Sherrill, representative from New Jersey, wrote the letter to the Department of Justice. She just didn't make an accusation. She wrote a letter to the Department of Justice accusing Republicans of criminal activity and demanded that they investigate. That is a violation of House rules. You cannot disparage another member of Congress. So the committee reached out to her and said, you say you have firsthand evidence of this. Where did you see it happen? And she said, well, I didn't actually see it, but I know other people who did. And she said they were tours of the Capitol. And so she then went on MSNBC and doubled down and said they were actual reconnaissance tours of the Capitol. So I filed an ethics violation against her and the 33 members who signed on to the letter that was blatantly false. I think that's why they came after me, because I was trying to hold their feet to the fire back then. And so now they decide they're going to make this allegation against me. And let me tell you, I'm not going to sit by and let a false narrative, blatantly untrue allegation sit. Truth is under attack in this nation, and we've got to be able to stand up for what is true and what is right, or we're going to lose this nation forever. And so I told my wife and my family, look, I'm going to fight back. We cannot just let them run over people the way that they're doing. Mm hmm Good for you. Um, so now let, let's talk about the actual footage that it was very select. They they hired what the former president of ABC News to try to help them with their storytelling for primetime TV. So they, they produced these edited videos of, oh, look, there's there's someone on a tour and it appears he's taking a picture of a stairwell or of a of a window. Now, I got to tell you, I've taken a lot of pictures in the Capitol of, well, for example, there's that one stairwell on the Senate side that has bullet holes from the War of 1812 where the British came in. Yeah. So it looks it'd be looking like I'm taking a picture of a stairwell because of the bullet holes or or I'm taking one out the window because uh, of the beautiful view up there and that appears to be what was actually happening. Right. And there's a stairwell in the Capitol that has blood stains from a congressman that was shot by a reporter, and a lot of people take pictures of, of that. The, in fact, 
everywhere that this family and their guests went were public corridors and hallways that visitors walk through every day in the Capitol. Mm -hmm. To get from one place to the other, you have to walk down these corridors and people take pictures. So when the committee comes out and says, oh, this is these are places that pe the visitors normally don't go. No, they're not. They're places the visitors have to go. They're the only way to get around. And so we're taking them from my office to the cafeteria. They have to go down that those those corridors. And so uh, for the committee to come out and say, well, these are unusual places. No. And just like you said, taking a picture of the stairwell at, at that stairwell at the landing, just maybe 10 feet away, is a light fixture, a large light fixture that is a golden eagle holding two candles. People take pictures of that all the time. And so when you actually look at the complete uh, security footage, you see that they're doing nothing but being tourists. So like you said, what they do is they take selective parts of it. Instead of releasing the actual video of the young man walking around and, and videoing, they will pause it like he's taking the picture of something specific, like he's taking the picture of a security checkpoint when he's actually taking the picture of the sign that says United States Capitol or uh, a marble wall that has an inscription on it. Because then you also look at it, they have to put a narrative with it so you will take away from it what they want you to take away. Because if they didn't put the description of what they wanted you to think, you would think, well, that's the guy taking a picture, big deal. Mm -hmm. So this is what they do. They, they manipulate the data. And I can tell you, and this is what infuriates me about this committee. Every person on that committee, as a member of Congress, they know that everything that this family and their guests did is normal activity for anyone who has ever been to the Capitol. They know there is nothing there. They know that no one, not a single person that was with us that day has ever been accused of a crime, has ever been, had committed a crime. They didn't even get close to the Capitol on January 6th, but they are pursuing this to make people think that there was something nefarious. And you know who's being hurt is this family. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're getting tons of death threats. And I've told the family, look, I'm going to protect you. I'm not going to let the people know who you are because you don't need to go through what I'm going through. Well, and let, let's focus on that for a minute because I was going to ask you this question. If, if I understood it right, now you're confirming it, that this family who, that took the pictures, that took the tour, they there no been no charges. There's no evidence they were in the Capitol, nothing. None. Not what, none whatsoever. And so if they – if they have been investigated. They've been cleared. Look, when the Capitol Police reviewed the same video footage, and they are trained to know what is suspicious and what looks nefarious or questionable, they came out with a report, a letter that said, we've reviewed this, and there was nothing. First of all, never did any of them go to the Capitol, which, again, was their first allegation. When we debunked that, they changed it to Capitol Complex, which is 22 buildings. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. Then they said, well, it's reconnaissance tours of the office buildings. Well, this family that came in came to visit me, and then they you know, went to, to lunch in the cafeteria. And so we gave the Capitol Police the time frame. We said this is the time frame of when they came and about when they left. They went and reviewed the videos, and they said there was nothing to this and wrote a letter to that saying, there was nothing suspicious and there were no reconnaissance tours. Nothing that we saw elevates any suspicion. So when we released that, it, it actually even caused the liberal left media to question the validity or the integrity of the January 6th committee. So we knew they had to come back. And so they came back and re released these little selective uh, security video clips. And so, again, everyone on that committee knows there's nothing to this, but they're they're continuing to push their false narrative, which is having an effect on a lot of people. Well, yeah, and, and let's talk about that for a minute because it's very clear that uh, starting with their primetime hearing where they spent 37 minutes 
with their opening statements uh, before they even got to the evidence that supposedly we never seen before, and it was all stuff they'd already leaked to the media. That uh, they're they're clearly the Democrats, given the polling right now, are trying to use this spectacle not to figure out what happened, but to make a case that Republicans can't be trusted with leadership. Right, and this is all politics, which is so frustrating. You know, there was an article that came out yesterday that said the Department of Justice is getting frustrated with the January 6th committee because they're not sharing any of the testimonies that they've received with the Department of Justice. And in my opinion, it's clear why. There's nothing legal about what they're pursuing. It's all political. This is all political show. And so, they're, of course, they're not going to share it with the DOJ because even this DOJ would look at it and say, there is nothing here. Mm-hmm. There's nothing here. Yeah, it, it, there, there does. It, it definitely started out as almost a desperate plea for please indict Merrick Garland, and and the, now that the more and more is coming, there doesn't really appear to be a there there at all. Um, let me shift gears with you real quick, because um, you, you guys are in the minority. I know what the polling is. Uh, probably headed back to the majority. Uh, l- let's just say hypothetically, things actually do go as well as polling suggests. Uh, what do you, as a as a member of Congress, who's had Nancy Pelosi as speaker these last couple of years, really think that uh, you guys need to be doing that you're not doing right now? Well, first of all, we have to focus on the issues that are important to the American people. What the Democrats have done is they've totally ignored their big government socialist policies that has caused the gas prices to go up, inflation to run out of control, uh, shortages of critical supplies and goods, massive illegal immigration at the border, and a crime wave across the nation. These are all directly because of far-left Democrat big government policies. We have to address those quickly, and we have to do those first. Then we also have to look at holding the Democrats accountable for things like the January 6th committee that have – the committee is operating outside the boundaries of constitutional limits of powers of Congress. They're they're doing investigations, which is part of the executive branch. We have no power to investigate or subpoena a private citizen, but yet they have actually subpoenaed someone who was on a tour with us. You know, how offensive is that? Mm-hmm. Um, and then they, they're, they're, do, they're trying to be all three branches of government within the scope of Congress. We have to hold them accountable for that, besides the in, entire committee being illegitimate because Nancy Pelosi appointed everybody instead of Republicans getting their appointments. So we have to hold them accountable, accountable to that. We also have to be holding the executive branch accountable for the things that they're doing at the southern border with with uh, the crime across the nation. But one other thing we need to do is start again something that Senator Mike Lee and I began back in 2015, which is the Article One Project, which was a group of us that were pushing legislation that rebalanced, constitutionally rebalanced the power in this nation and draw back from the executive branch so much that we have handed to them away from Congress. Congress mm-hmm. has specific powers that we have to draw those back. And unfortunately, you know, we were we were doing really well, but then President Trump got elected and it fell apart. I'm like, guys, just because a Republican's in the White House doesn't mean that we have to stop doing what we should be doing constitutionally. So we have to go back down that path to where Congress is being responsible for legislating and quit handing the ball to the executive branch just because you're guys. There. Now, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm almost out of time here, but I just I just got a comment here. One, I, I like the Article One project, but I, I knew I liked you, but I didn't realize you were as big a nerd to, to do something with Mike Lee. That's like next level <laughs> nerd stuff. <laughs> oh, Mike Lee are good, and I are good friends, and we're both constitutionalists, and, and we have a bigger picture. See, I look at not just where America is right now, because that will depress you all day long, but I look at America of where I want it to be. And to do that, you got to understand where we came from. And Mike Lee shares that vision with me. You know, a government that is small in size, limited in scope, and understands that it's the liberty of the American people is our foremost duty is to protect that liberty. And so I believe in America that is free, safe, and full of opportunity, and you get that by limiting the power of government not increasing the power of government. 
Amen to that. Congressman, listen, I, I hate that you're in this whirlwind. I know you'll get through it. It's, it's just miserable to see them do this to you. But I appreciate you holding your head up and, and being such a good champion there for rebalancing the government and, and taking on this issue. So thank you very much for stopping by. Well, thank you, Eric. And let me tell you, there's a lot of people praying for us. And, and I know you know this. God is more powerful than they are, and he's going to see us through. Amen. Thank you very much. Congressman Barry Loudermilk, uh, good to know. And, and again, it's worth pointing out, this family that supposedly uh, took all of these pictures, they, they've they never been prosecuted. They weren't a part of it. They weren't there. Uh, it, it's just, it's ridiculous uh, to see them do what they're doing to this congressman. He's a good guy. Uh, now, I got to tell you, uh, one of the companies that's out there fighting for guys like Barry Loudermilk uh, fighting for conservatives, fighting for causes. It's Patriot Mobile. And to do it, they get you as a customer. And then as they make a profit, they dedicate a portion of it to the conservative movement. It's actually kind of a genius concept. Uh, you take your business there and you get uh, quality cell phone service from them. I mean, but they're Christian and conservative and they operate that way. So you use them for your cell phone provider and they use the same towers everybody else yet uses. So if you don't believe me, uh, just go to PatriotMobile.com and look at their coverage map, detailed coverage maps uh, down to your house. And you can see you get 5G, you get voice, you get data. And then they take a portion of their profits and give it to the causes you care about. The Second Amendment, the First Amendment, the pro-life movement, the veterans first responders movement, the conservative movement. And they really do it. They are just great people, and they're 100% U.S.-based. So if you call them, if you don't want to go online, you can call them 972-PATRIOT. Tell them I sent you. Or just go to their website, patriotmobile.com slash Eric, patriotmobile.com slash E-R-I-C-K. If you tell them I sent you, if you call them, or you go to patriotmobile.com slash Eric, you get free activation with my name. You can port your existing phone number over. You don't even need to get a new phone number if you don't want to. They can take care of you, patriotmobile.com slash Eric. Hi there, you should text RECIPE to 33777. Have no idea what recipe I'm going to send out uh, next week. Haven't decided yet, but I'll send you something good on Wednesday next week. Uh, it, but it, if you if you do uh, text RECIPE to 33777, uh, you will get a link back to the Substack where I'm keeping all the recipes. So on Wednesday, I sent out my quesadilla recipe. It's really good. Uh, with black beans, corn, and steak or chicken. Well, last week was the onion rings. The week before was ice cream pie. The week before was margaritas. The week before was nested eggs. It's a breakfast dish. Um, uh, y'all should text recipe to 33777. Now, you've got an option for like $30 a year. You don't have to. You can just sign up for free if you want. If you do the $30, that money goes to help me do the recipe development, buying the groceries to actually test the stuff. I got some recipes I've got in my head that I want to try to perfect to send out to you guys. Um, but then I got a lot of stuff that I cook generally. There's this great app. It, 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 people have been asking me about this. There's an app I use. It's called Paprika. Paprika 3. It's the third version of it now. Uh, and it syncs. I can run it on my Mac, uh, my, my, uh, power, my MacBook Pro can run it on my iPhone, and I run it on my iPad. And it syncs all the recipes across the whole platform. So I've always got my cookbook of, of recipes there. And it's a lot of recipes I find online. It's like, oh, I like that. And then what I tend to do, I was talking to a friend of mine who does recipe development, and she was telling me she actually finds recipes that look interesting, and she just conforms them to her taste profile, that it's rare that she just says, I'm going to combine all these ingredients try to come up with something. Usually she gets inspired by someone else's recipe and starts developing recipes from that. So that's what I'm doing. That's what I intend to do at least. Uh, and I will send some your way. All you got to do is text the word recipe singular to 33777, and you can get my recipes. Now, at the end, i got to play you a quick bit of audio from Mitch McConnell on the floor of the Senate yesterday. The term stagflation was invented to describe the most painful economic condition for workers and families. It means the worst of three worlds at once, high inflation, slow growth, and rising unemployment. Unless something changes... We all hope it does. This appears to be exactly the trajectory on which Democrats' policies have put our country. 
The last time we had a unified Republican government, our policies created low inflation, robust growth, and record low unemployment. Sole Democratic Party control has produced something quite different. That's going to be the Republican message headed into the midterms. Meanwhile, the Democrats can't figure out their message yet. They got five months. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.